what's going on guys? So after a long spell of inactivity, Everton are closing in on their second signing of the summer with Sporting Club de Portugal defender Ruben Vinagre arriving on a season-long loan with an option to buy at the end of the year. Although I'm expecting Vitaly Mikalenko to start most games, this adds some much-needed depth to Frank Lampard's squad in what will be a relentless fixture schedule and also ensures Ben Godfrey won't have to be pushed out wide as he has been in the past, which was a complete piss-take in my eyes. The cover and competition Vinagre provides will allow Lampard to stick to his 3-4-3 formation, in which wingbacks are expected to contribute massively in both halves of the pitch. In regards to Vinagre's career trajectory, it's been all over the fucking place for him so far. He spent the majority of his academy days at Sporting before being snapped up by Monaco as a 16-year-old, a club who are always looking to bring in the best young talents in the game. The guy was killing it at youth level for his country, winning the under-17 and under-19 Euros a mere two years apart and featuring in the team of the tournament in both of them. This, however, didn't quite translate to club level. While he performed admirably for Monaco's reserves, he couldn't quite break into their first team and ended up moving to then-championship side Wolves via George Mendes, who was just getting started with his Portuguese revolution at Molyneux. Upon winning promotion, the lad was offered a five-year deal to make his move permanent, which he duly accepted. The subsequent recruitment of Johnny, however, meant that he largely played second fiddle and only got game time when the Spaniard was injured or suspended. Eventually, he headed to Greece on a season-long loan at Olympiakos, who also had an option to make the deal permanent. Things didn't go quite as planned due to injury and he was unable to impose himself on his new employers. With such a hefty setback, he was left with no choice but to take a step back in his career and join Portuguese mid-table side Famalicão, which is where he resurrected his career and caught the eye of his former club sporting. They took him up on loan last season, but unfortunately, he didn't particularly impress. Nonetheless, this time round, the transfer included an obligation to buy, which is precisely why he's now being shipped off after only recently making his move permanent, something you rarely, if ever, see in the game. Interestingly, Vinagre is well known to Everton director of football Kevin Thelwell from their time together at Wolves, and in fact fell out of favour in the Midlands only after the latter departed for New York Red Bulls in February 2020, which might explain the logic behind this incoming. In terms of his style of play, he's a very explosive fullback with substantial trickery and imaginative dribbling. Couple that with excellent speed, and you have a player who's great going forward but slightly suspect defensively. You'll often find him using his pace and ball control to get to the byline and create dangerous attacking opportunities for his team to benefit from. When compared to Mikalenko, he's got superior technique, ability and ball retention skills and will certainly provide more of a threat in the opposition third. That being said, as mentioned earlier, Mikalenko's probably the more well-rounded option due to his maturity in decision-making and reading of the game, particularly when his side's backs are against the wall, which as much as it pains me to say is more often than not likely to be the case next season. Overall, while he's hardly the second coming of Roberto Carlos, I believe Vinagre is a decent signing for an Everton side who, let's be real, have one of the worst benches and thinnest squads in the entire league. Vinagre's Premier League experience is also an added bonus which obviously doesn't come often with foreign imports. And the fact that he'll have to prove himself in order to remain at Goodison Park means he can't rest on his laurels and sit on a contract, something a lot of modern day players tend to do. As someone who's always liked Everton, I do worry about the club and sincerely hope they can bring in a couple more bodies who will help them beat the drop, which is the absolute fucking minimum you'd expect from a club of this stature, regardless of the financial issues ongoing off the pitch. The supporters were arguably the primary reason they avoided relegation a couple of months ago and deserve so much better than the shite they've been served up in recent years. Let's wait and see if things turn around. For those of you new to my channel, I've done a breakdown on what James Tarkovsky will offer to Everton, which you can access via the top right hand corner of your screen, and we'll certainly be covering more Everton related content moving forward. Cheers for tuning in guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If that is the case, please do consider giving it a like and subscribe for more football related content. As always, I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments down below, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have in mind. Take care and have a great rest of the day. Peace.